guys, it's Megan, and in today's video, I'll be showing you nine art hacks that I actually use. But before we get started, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to today's video sponsor, GlassesUSA.com. By cutting out the middleman, GlassesUSA.com is able to offer prescription glasses and sunglasses for up to 70% off of retail prices. Now, I've worn glasses for almost 20 years, which I said almost, but like, yes, I'm old. And I have never owned like sunglasses that I could just, you know, throw on because the prescription ones were just always out of my price range. But at GlassesUSA.com, a complete pair of sunglasses or eyeglasses starts at just $30, and free basic prescription lenses are included with every frame. Their lenses are the same high quality that you'd find at any glasses store, and they offer over 6,000 frame styles. This includes their in-house brands like Muse and Amelia E, as well as designer brands like Ray-Ban, Armani, Gucci, and more. You can customize your lenses even further by adding a blue light coating or transition lenses. GlassesUSA.com also has a virtual mirror feature that lets you see what the glasses will look like before you buy them. When you click on a pair of glasses, there's this Try Online button in the bottom left. Click Upload Image and take a picture of yourself without your glasses, following the on-screen instructions. Upload it from your computer and play around with the photo settings if you need to. Drag the red targets to the center of your eyes, and you're all set. Your photo will be saved, so you can quickly see what any pair of glasses will look like. If you're in the market for some new glasses, make sure to check out the link in my description. So with all that being said, let's just get into the video. The first art hack that I actually use is to make your own glue dots. The secret to making these is repositionable glue. I used Aline's Tacket over and over, which goes for about $4 at Michael's. You'll also need some parchment or wax paper. Literally, all you do is put dots of the glue onto the parchment paper and wait for it to dry. The best part about this method is that you can make glue dots in any size that you need. I made a bunch of smaller ones, a few big ones, and a few lines. You could also spread a thin layer of this glue on the back of some squares of paper to make some custom post-it notes. Or you could put a little on the back of a stencil to keep it from moving around while you paint. When the glue dots dry, they'll look something like this. This is perfect if you do a lot of paper crafting like I do. I used my glue dots to mount some pattern pieces I made to another sheet of paper so I could scan it to make a digital version. To store the glue dots, just put another piece of parchment paper on top until you need them again. This next idea is something that I've wanted to do for the longest time. Whenever I sew, I move back and forth between my machine and my desk, and I always seem to leave my pins in random places, so I thought this wrist pin cushion would be the perfect solution. For this project, you'll need felt, scrap fabric, velcro, stuffing, recycled plastic, scissors, and a hot glue gun. I still have a ton of this space print fabric left over, so I made my pincushion into an alien shape. I linked my pattern that I made down below if you want this one, but you can do any shape that you'd like. Cut out two alien head pieces for the body of the pincushion. Then cut two football shaped pieces for the eyes. You can sew these on with a machine, but I decided to just hand sew mine. After the eyes were sewn on, I embroidered on a little mouth. Since this pincushion was gonna go on my wrist, I didn't wanna, you know, accidentally poke myself or anything, so I cut some plastic from an old water jug to create sort of a barrier for the inside. I stuck that on the plain piece of felt with some hot glue. I pinned the alien head with the right sides together and sewed along the edges. I left a fairly large opening at the top to turn it right side out, since the plastic kinda makes it a little bit less flexible. I filled the head with a bunch of stuffing, then sewed the top shut. To make the armband, I folded a piece of fabric in half with the right sides together, traced around my pattern, and cut that out. I sewed along the longest open edge with my machine, then flipped the fabric right side out. I sewed up the open ends with a ladder stitch, then added Velcro. This is kind of hard to explain, but I put one side of the Velcro on top of the left and put the other part of the Velcro on the bottom of the right of the wristband. I hand sewed the pincushion to the wristband, and then it was done. Now I'll always know where my pincushion is when I'm sewing. And speaking of sewing, one of the things that really annoys me about it is having to go back and forth between my mom's craft room and mine to use the ironing board. So I decided to make my own mini version. For this project, you'll need a piece of plywood, quilt batting, some fabric, and a staple gun. I had this batting left over from when I made the headboard in my room. I folded it so that there would be two layers, then cut out a piece that was larger than my board. I just folded the edges of the batting to the back, and used a staple gun to keep the batting in place. I've used hot glue on other projects like this in the past, but for this one I would not recommend that because you know you're gonna be ironing on this and you don't wanna like remelt the hot glue. But if you don't have batting, you could also fold up an old towel instead. 
I cut off the excess batting and covered the board with a layer of fabric. The fabric that I used was a thicker cotton. This was from the table skirt that I had on my old desk. Staple that to the back and you're all set. This is perfect for anyone with a smaller craft space or really anyone that doesn't have room for a full size ironing board. Speaking of my craft room, I wanted to find a way to organize my sticker collection. I'd originally stored them in these plastic bins, but as you can see, they were kind of overflowing and hard to shut. I covered an old shoe box with some wrapping paper, then went through my stickers and sorted them by category. I used some cardstock paper and these binder tabs to make dividers for the shoe box. If you don't have these tabs, you can just cut some out of paper and tape them on. I cut my paper down to size, then added the tabs. I separated my stickers into eight categories. Holiday, Halloween, Christmas, Animals, Characters, Lisa Frank, Shapes, and Planner stickers. But when I put the dividers in the box, I kind of had a problem. See, what I should have done was made them go like along the longer side of the box because my sticker books didn't quite fit in there. Eventually, I just decided to use the dividers to organize smaller sheets of stickers and keep all the bigger sticker books in front. Even though it didn't turn out exactly the way that I planned, now it's a lot easier for me to flip through my sticker collection and see what I have. Another sort of hack that I came up with is to use gum wrappers as silver foil. Essentially, you take a gum wrapper and then you crumple it up and flatten it out. Keep crumpling it up and flattening it out a couple more times, and then you should be able to peel the silver part away from the paper backing. A lot of times you can get the foil to come off in like one big sheet, but this one just decided to be stubborn. But you can use this just like you'd use those little gold foil things that you can get. I've been really into making hair clips lately, so I used some foil and UV resin to make a hair clip. I made one clip that was completely filled with the foil, and another one that used the foil as an accent. You can use this foil technique on paper as well. Just stick it down with some tacky glue. This next idea was something that I found on TikTok, and that's to use silly bands as resin molds. Since I'm apparently one of those people who just like never gets rid of anything, it was pretty easy to find my silly band collection from 2010. You could also get these at five below. Besides the silly bands, you'll need some masking tape and some resin. I used UV resin because it hardens faster, but it should work with normal resin as well. Wrap a piece of masking tape around a scrap piece of cardboard with the sticky side facing out. Place a silly band on top, making sure that the edges are pressed down. Then just fill the silly band with resin. I filled this one halfway with plain resin and threw in some star-shaped glitter that I got at Michael's. I cured that under my UV lamp, then added some resin that I colored using a cheap alcohol ink set from Five Below. I cured that, removed the silly band from the resin, then removed the resin piece from the tape. If any resin happened to spill outside of the rubber band, you can just cut it off with scissors or sand it down. These would make great pins, or you could drill a hole in them to make jewelry. They would also be great to use as a decoration in a larger resin project like a tray or something. This next idea is kind of random, but it works really well. Like I said, I've been super into making hair clips lately, and I just made a bunch of them with polymer clay. It can be really hard to keep polymer clay clean though, especially the lighter colors like white or yellow. This yellow clip had a ton of dust and hair on it. The good news is, it came right off with a little acetone nail polish remover. After you bake your polymer clay, Dip a Q-tip into some nail polish remover and scrub the clay until the dust comes off. I've been using this technique for years. It always makes my clay projects look so much nicer and more professional. You can also use nail polish remover to help clean resin or glue off of your paintbrushes. Let me know in the comments. If you have longer hair, do you like to wear hair accessories like this? Or do you prefer to just keep it down? Now, you guys know that I'm a huge fan of recycled crafts, which is why I love this next idea. All you need is some empty boxes and some tacky glue. Cut your boxes down to size. I made some with three layers and some with two, and the ones that I made with two layers were way easier to cut. Squeeze tacky glue all over the printed side of one of the cardboard pieces. Spread it out using a scrap piece of cardboard so the whole thing's covered. Put another piece of cardboard on top, this time with the right side facing down. Use a brayer or another round object to flatten the cardboard pieces to make sure they're stuck together. You can use Elmer's glue if you don't have tacky glue. I tested it out and the Elmer's glue is thinner so the cardboard could slip around a little bit easier while it dries, but otherwise it works about the same. Add a piece of masking tape to the top and bottom so the cardboard doesn't slide around, and wipe any excess glue off the edges. 
Put a piece of parchment or wax paper on the top and bottom of the chipboard to protect your work surface from any extra glue. Then place something heavy like a book on top and let it dry for a few hours. I let mine dry overnight. Take the masking tape off and your chipboard's ready to use. You can cut this with an X-Acto knife, scissors, or your Cricut machine. I used my Cricut Maker and the deep cut blade to cut the pieces for a pegboard organizer I designed. I placed the chipboard on the strong grip mat and taped down the edges with masking tape. To cut through the chipboard that was two layers, I chose the 6mm magnetic sheet setting. I assembled the box with more masking tape. I put a piece on each side that would be connected to another one on the inside of the box, then folded it up. After that, I added a second piece of masking tape to each edge of the box on the outside, and covered the whole thing with contact paper. You could decorate the chipboard however you'd like. You could paint it, use scrapbook paper, duct tape, whatever you have on hand. This box was the perfect size to hold my new glasses, and it's perfect for holding pencils or pens. The last art hack that I have for you guys is an easy way to make your own SVG file. This will allow you to cut out anything that you want from your Cricut or other cutting machine. Just go to picksvg.com and upload an image. I find it helpful to remove the background or anything else that you don't want from the image before you upload it. Once the image is uploaded, you can choose from a few different options. Play around with them and see which one you like the best, then click Download SVG. Now you can upload the image to Cricut Design Space and cut it out. This technique would be great for personalized GIFs. You could turn any photo into a custom pillow, coaster, tumbler, shirt, or really anything else that you can think of. So that was everything for this video. Thank you guys so, so much for watching, and don't forget that you can check out Glasses USA with the link in the description. My merch, my website, and all of my social media will be linked down below. I love you guys so, so much, and I will see you guys later. Bye.